What's going on, people? My name's Timmy Joe, making videos about computers all up on the internet. Today's an exciting day because I woke up to a commenter on my YouTube channel by the name of, I think, Valkyrie, or spelled it weird, but whatever. And he all he did was point me in the direction to something that's very exciting, so thank you, sir. A little nudge in the right direction is a good thing sometimes. So he pointed me over to an article uh, that Igor's lab did on unlocking the power play tables, making a soft power play table for the Navi cards. For, hey, listen, this shirt is available at Redbubble. Links in the description. It's a funny card. So, <laughs> um, he basically fixed it because I did this whole Vision Tech Timmy Joe Racing Stripe mod on this card, and uh, I kind of showed that uh, once you get AIB partner cards, things are going to be looking good because. That's a pretty crappy cooler from an R9390. Couple of heat pipes, but the fans specifically. Things have been a lot more modernized. If you look at like a Strix card these days, or you know, a good Red Devil or something like that, coolers have gotten way better since the 390, you know, cheap 390s and stuff like that. So there is a lot that can be done with this. It makes things exciting. So before I jump all over into what's going on and what have you and why, I set up a practical test so that we can see how awesome this is. So we have the Witcher here and he's standing in a field, okay, and we're at stock. We're seeing a bo you know, boost clock, or sorry, a game clock, not a boost clock, of under 1700 megahertz, 1688. We're getting 106 FPS, staring at the trees here. We're on 1080p ultra settings, so you know, GPU bound and what have you. And, uh, or we should be pretty GPU bound anyways. Ryzen 3700X at 4.3 gigahertz, all core. That's my test bench right now. And uh, so what we're going to do is head over to MSI Afterburner. It's going to pause the game. And we're going to implement what used to be the maximum overclock I could get with this card with my mod, which is maxing out what MSI Afterburner used to allow or what uh, Wattman would allow. That's 1850 megahertz with a 20% boost to the power limit. Okay, that is what AMD made happen. But that has been altered, as we'll see in just a second. So this is the max overclock you could do before. And we'll go ahead and go back in game. And we see that FPS jumps up by about five FPS. So the overclock, because we've actually gone up about 100 megahertz on the core clock, we get five FPS. That's golden, that's awesome. That's a little bit overclocking headroom. Everyone will be happy with that. But us tweakers and people that want to put water coolers on these things, we want more, don't we? Well, we can get more now. This used to be maximum, and we see here the card's climbing up to 80, uh, 72 degrees. That memory actually always gets in the 90 degrees for, with the blower cooler uh, after long gaming sessions. So a lot of people with that mod were saying, hey, your memory is really high. Well, it doesn't actually matter. Apparently the memory operating temperature is pretty high, but we see here we're at 73 degrees. So the cooler is doing a pretty good job. Uh, it, it will climb up to around 78 or 79 with this overclock, but we're seeing here just under 1800 megahertz. But you want 1800 megahertz, don't you? So I'm gonna get a little bit loud here, but then I'll shut it off and we'll show you how I actually did all this. Go back over to MSI Afterburner and I have a new overclock I can apply. And it's gonna get a little loud, but we see here 1942, 1942. So the XT can clock like real high. So I was wondering why can't this card do that? Because AMD doesn't want it to because even though it has less stream processors, it's the same GPU die with some stuff turned off and the potential is there to get very close to the XT's performance. Why would you sell a card for $50 less that can do the $50 more card? You get what I'm saying? So let's switch back over to The Witcher and we see that FPS jump, another five FPS and now we're just under 1900 megahertz. Now this power play table implemented does have a little bit of voltage apparently tweaked on it. Uh, but I don't have access in MSI Afterburner to increase the voltage and I wasn't having much success like maybe we could go over there and we could uh, increase this to I don't know 1955 and increase the power limit a little bit more and increase the fan a little bit more and we'll jump over to Witcher and my overlay went away there we go Let's see if we can get it to 1900 megahertz. We're, we're creeping up there. Now we're at 117 for an FPS. That's really, really cool. I'm gonna, uh, I'll just do it until it crashes. 1972, we'll go 
that much power limit. We'll just max the fan on the cards out. It's not that loud anyways. So I'm already seeing, no, I locked the, the computer up. So I was doing testing before this. Uh, of course I locked it up first try. But you saw there, we were running, it'll actually run very stable at about 1880 megahertz. That's another 100 megahertz above and beyond what AMD was allowing us to do with an overclock. And that's with like, the same sort of power limits and voltage settings and this isn't a custom card with a possibly better vrm so what this does is it points us in the direction that these navi cards have all kinds of headroom and i'd really love to get my hands on an anniversary edition but more so partner cards what i think amd did was their graphics have been, you know, very good with mining and RX 580s and stuff like that. But Vega was such a shit show and whatever that the high end cards, I think a lot of partners were like, you got to do something for us, AMD. You got to do something for us, especially those that don't do motherboards and, you know, have benefited from the whole, you know, the Ryzen thing. So they said, okay, we'll launch Ryzen, we'll launch Navi, and then in like a month or two, we'll let you guys go ham crazy on the partner models and will give you probably a lot of room to get rid of some of these limits with your bigger, badder coolers. Because remember, you're going from a blower cooler to like, think of a Strix cooler, think of a Twin Frozer, or I don't know, whatever, the Tri-X coolers, these giant coolers from MSI and stuff like that. Those will be able to cool this little die into two gigahertz, no problem. So I don't think it's long before we see an upgraded model. But you wanna know how to do this yourself, you say? Follow me, follow me. So uh, we go over here and uh, I've got a mouse, there we go. This is Igor's lab and uh, I'll link this in the description. It's in German, but you know, uh, I actually have like a translated version here. So you can read it over yourself. There's lots of disclaimers on this that say, Igor, nor am I, I'm responsible for you putting this on your card and blowing it up. So keep that in mind. This is, you know, user beware if you're gonna do stuff like this. but. He goes over how, like, look, he's got a water cooler on his already, which is, you know, great. And he's figured it out. He's just, he's the test system measurement method. You know, he, he goes over it. So we'll go over to uh, the second page where he shows that with his XT, he's able to beat or the uh, 2070 Super in Tomb Raider, which is awesome. And he's very close to beating the, or getting close to the 2080. He's a, what, 0.8 frames per second off with his mod. That's, that's awesome. That means that the high-end heavy cards, you know, the XT, and once we get some partner models out there, are going to be amazing bang for your bucks, man. They're going to be awesome because they're getting up there with very high-end NVIDIA cards. NVIDIA... It makes sense that they launch, they're they launching these super cards and they're gonna wait until the board partner comes out and then they're gonna say, hey, look at our new 2080 supers, guys. Look at us, look at us, because we need to be faster. But they're always gonna be a little bit more expensive and this is just, it's awesome. So I thank Igor. What he did was something I've done with Vega before where you alter the power play tables in order to get higher clocks, higher sustain clocks and stuff like this. But with Vega, you really needed a water cooling situation to do this with okay and now we've got you know what's essentially all you need is a little bit better uh you know a modern air cooler on the thing and we're going to be able to really push these cards and what's awesome is where does it say here explosion of power consumption not really the 5700 max core clock plus 50 uh 95 power limit it was only what um 57 max core clock like it's only uh what 30 or 40 more watts from the wall like that's awesome if this is no vega no vega whatsoever so this is super awesome so go check him out and subscribe if you're german because he's totally worth checking out i want to thank him i've emailed him already and thanked him very much said so i'd give him a little shout out or whatever uh, i have a lot more subscribers than him but I'm fairly certain he's a lot smarter than me and a lot more solidified in the industry. So thanks, Igor. Very, very cool stuff. You can download these power tables for yourself. He made it all available. What you need to do is use DDU, the display driver uninstaller, and just get rid of any drivers that are in your registry. Okay, do it in safe mode. And I had to do this. And then uh, what you do is you go down here and you download 
one of his uh, power play, soft power play table mods. So basically, you just double click a file and it should load a registry item once you've cleared out all the driver information and it changes in the registry how the card behaves and the power limits and stuff like that. This is something we've already done with Vega. It's kind of a tried and true method and I didn't think it was going to be this easy. I am nowhere near smart enough to alter these. Like I've done it before. You have to kind of go and change hex values in, in, uh, inside of these uh, files and stuff like that. I've done it a little bit to uh, increase power limits on the Vega before when I had liquid cooled and stuff like that. Uh, but this is a whole nother level of easy. The one caveat I have to say about that is in his explanation here, he does say that it's going to be in uh, zero, 0 and mine ended up even with a complete wipe being zero, 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 0001. So I had to go in and alter the files so that the uh, registry like was added to the correct value. Once I did that, it loads up, you restart the computer, and when you go in there, all of a sudden, all the limits are unlocked in MSI Afterburner. And forget Wattman, but they would be unlocked in there as well. So very, very, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. It's as simple as double clicking. Now, you need to have a better cooling solution. Uh, like maybe on the air cards, if you want to blast it back in cleaner style, you'll be able to uh, do this. But it would be more than likely better for you to either put some sort of cooling mod on one of these lower models or wait for the partners to come out and then we'll do sort of the same thing with some better coolers. But essentially, it's double clicking a few files to unlock the limits of these cards. It makes me so happy that this is near the performance of an XT. So you want to see that it actually is? I ran some tests. Okay. So let's go over to some Time Spy results. Okay. Love Time Spy because you can, you know, 3D Mark, you can run a test and show an increase. It doesn't mean it's going to increase in your favorite game, but it's a good way of seeing the progression of this. So we go over, this is a completely stock score. I reran all of these scores on the Ryzen 3700X. 8051 that is overclocked Ryzen with the stock Navi card. We go over here, this is as overclocked as I could get before, 8400. We see that that graphic score increased, well, up about 400 points. Pretty decent, pretty decent. Once I unlocked the power mod, oh my goodness though, she jumps up another couple hundred points and jumps, you know, we get an, uh, an increase in the score. So that's pretty dang awesome. And if you want to go check out the XT score, I just grabbed it from um, Kit Guru here because they had it on a chart, 8765. So we're like 100 points off from the stock performance in Time Spy for the XT. That's awesome. This, is, this means that you can buy one of these 5700s and get it fairly close to the stock performance of the $50 more expensive card. Now that $50 more expensive card is going to go even further than that once you overclock it, but it's, it's cool. It's big at 56 to 64, you know, RX 570 to 580 kind of thing. You know, like if, if, if you know, you were into overclocking those, you can get pretty close to the next level up, which is great because I was worried that wasn't going to be true. And these were truly going to be locked down. We'll just show time, uh, fire strike as well. Cause I have it up here. Here's the stock result, 20,291 with a graphic score of 23,140 goes up to 24, 20, uh, 221, and uh, you know, gets up pretty close there, but check this out. Boom, 22,000 I'm able to get with it all unlocked near 1900 megahertz. And I'm sure once this is tweaked and refined, and I'm sure someone will figure out how to unlock the voltage eventually in MSI Afterburner, I think that would really help out. What I noticed was that I don't think that the core is limited it's the power is limited because when i was doing tests with this uh when i was just creeping things up, up ever so slightly in fire strike i was getting artifacting over crashing and that tells me that i should with the artifacting there that normally means you can give a little bit more voltage and that artifacting will go away and you can even go a little bit further so i would imagine you'll see uh 5700 cards hitting 1900, you know, 1950 megahertz with the right kind of power delivery and stuff like that. The actual dye, the actual silicon is so awesome. It's, it's, it's actually like, I know everyone thinks, well, you know, Nvidia has been hitting two gigahertz for a while now, but the performance is there to be very close. You know, it's uh, like I showed you, it, he's got an XT up there near 2080 
in in uh, Tomb Raider. That's that's just awesome. So that's where I'm at with this. There's tons more to play with, but this initial results I knew warranted a video for anyone who's thinking of buying one of these things, uh, especially once the partner cards come out. It's giving us like a real beacon uh, because I think there was a lot of. Yeah, like even I was guilty of this in my initial review. There was a lot of, it's a blower model again, it's almost as fast, but not quite as fast. No, this is a real good step in the right direction because I am 100% confident we'll see a 5800 that's got 2080 Ti performance or 2080 Super performance by like January. Because why the hell not? Once Radeon 7's just done, and you know, I, I think they'll, they won't care about that card for too much longer. They're trying to at least make some of that money back and you know, cause there wasn't, there, there was no margins on that. And they're at least trying to, you know, get rid of stock they've put up on this and they have R and D into that card and whatnot. And there is reasons to use that card with 16 gigs of Ram, HBM. There are people out there that will love that card for what it is, but this is a whole new step in the right direction. This is, you know, uh, kind of a window into the future of RDNA. There is definitely some headroom in this architecture to keep going forward. That means that we might actually see AMD compete not only in the CPU space, but in the GPU space in 2020, very, very competitively. And that is awesome, because competition is great for everyone. I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I hope I made sense with all this. And uh, yeah. Got my cooler mod going, got my power tables mod going. I'm getting mad FPSs up in the games with this card. I gotta get my hands, I gotta get my hands on one of these XT cards, cause there's gotta be, like he is pushing like real high frequencies over two gigahertz with that. That's gotta be super fun. And then I can get a water block and really push the damn thing. You know, you can chill it out. Uh, and with this, you know, kind of stuff going on, we'll see these things on LN2 and stuff like that, really like breaking records. That should be cool. So at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter, Check out the shirts, links are in the description. Navi, I got the Chiplet shirt, I've got the Stop Staring At My GPU shirt. That's what the sponsor of the video is here today. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy your day. This has been a fun Friday for me. I was really ha happy that I found out this information this morning. I ran to my pet test bench. Like, don't worry wife, you take care of the kid. I'm gonna hack the internet. See you guys later.